everyone. This is Mike Koss, founder of Kev Advotech, and welcome to another podcast edition. Today, I'm pleased and proud to introduce and reintroduce my friend, Steve Cowherd. Steve has spent the previous two podcasts sharing his personal journey with his traumatic brain injury that he suffered five years ago, back in 2018. Steve has lived through a lot. He's learned a lot and continues to learn, and he's done an amazing job sharing and compiling things that he's learned. So if you get a chance to the audience, please go back, take a look at part one of our podcast, where you'll get an opportunity to meet Steve on a very close up and personal level. So I really enjoyed that conversation. And I uh, hope you get a chance to view that one and get to know Steve a lot better. Part two is uh, his top 10 list of lessons learned. And we got through the first four, the first four lessons learned in that podcast. Today, we're going to take a look at that top 10 list again, Steve, here when you can, can put it up on the screen. And uh, we're going to continue with number five, a bullet number five, actually, which is resource management. So Steve, welcome again. Say hi to the audience and uh, we'll get Mike, rolling. And welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're excited to get started and uh, work on finishing our journey through here. So uh, we're going to start with resource management today and uh, Very good. get us to that point there. And uh, resource management, uh, people ask, what are you talking about, resource management? Uh, uh, I'm an asset manager by trade, and so, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, it sounded right. We only have uh, a limited amount of resources uh, cognitively and physically, and uh, when they're gone, they're gone. They need to be replenished, and uh, resource management... Uh, You'll probably hear most people refer to it as cognitive fatigue. Well, that that's not managing your resources very well. Uh, getting getting to uh, a fatigue point, uh, and and uh, we all experience it. It doesn't matter the level of the brain injury. Uh, it this is one of the things that I've seen very common uh, that that we have in common. I know brain injuries are different for everybody, but this is one thing that. Uh, I, I haven't met anyone yet that doesn't uh, suffer with uh, some type of, or have suffered with some type of chronic fatigue because of it. So uh, happy to share this one. Uh, understand uh, you start your day at a disadvantage each day. I, I want you to imagine for a minute that your brain is a simple cell phone. We all have them now. You charge it each evening. Uh, when you sleep, that's what's charging your brain. Suddenly in the morning, you wake up and you only have four bars instead of five after you've charged all night long. Uh, that's a TBI for you. You're, you're going to start the, the, the morning at a disadvantage. Uh, it, it, yeah, it, and, that, and that's assuming, Steve, uh, I think, it, even if you had somewhat of a good night's sleep, Right. That, that that's correct. You uh th this is uh, the best you get, the four bars. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And and it can go from there as we go through here. Uh you, you need to understand. So your phone, it's gonna take longer to recharge it too. Uh imagine your old charger was 10 watts, and uh now suddenly you got a five watt charge. It's gonna take twice as much for you to charge. Uh, that charge back up to the four bars that you need to start with. Uh, by the way, uh, you, you will lose the battery meter completely. You won't be able to see where you stand throughout the day. Uh, it, it, it's gone. Uh, there, there is no battery meter. Uh, so I, the next thing I want to do, and this happens to me, it's happened to me as uh, recently as yesterday. Now let's throw in the wild card. Uh, there will be things you will experience that that can deplete your battery almost completely at a moment's notice. Uh, I, I I can tell you that uh, something can happen uh, and at a moment's notice 
you'll be uh, cognitively exhausted and you can't make rational decisions. You say things you know you shouldn't. All, all of that can happen. Uh, we call those triggers. <laughs> uh, by the way, you're not going to get provided a list of those triggers. Uh, you, you'll most likely stumble across them at the worst time. Uh, you, you need to record them and learn from them. Uh, everybody says no pain, no gain. Uh, well, you're putting in the pain. You, you need to make sure you gain something from it. Uh, record and learn from them. Uh, it, it's painful. You'll, 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 uh, you'll, uh, see them, uh, come up quite frequently and you say, why can't I learn from those? Uh, it, 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 it takes time. So, uh, but knowing what triggers this uh, and uh, can really help. The next thing you need to take notice of uh, is, is if you are triggered and you continue to push on without uh, a complete period of cognitive rest to restore your power. Uh, you know, it, it'll lead to what uh, I'd like to refer to as a meltdown uh, and, and uh once you've reached that stage, a normal night's rest or a normal night won't get you back to normal operating, won't get you back to your crappy four bars that you start every day with. Uh, recovering from meltdowns, depending on how far you pushed yourself, can take days or weeks uh, in, in some cases. Uh, just depends on how far you pushed yourself uh, past uh, the event that triggered you. Uh, it, it's uh, well, I, can, I could speak uh, from personal experience, Steve, with our son, Kevin, on, on meltdowns, right? Number one, they're, they're, not, fun, they're not fun for anyone. And, uh, you know, depending, certainly if you're in a public setting or whatever, and something just, like you said, it's a trigger. It could be anything. It could be somebody talking three tables away when we're sitting at the restaurant and Kevin may tune in on something and, and his brain gets a little spun out and, uh, you know, nothing personal, right? It's just something that, that kind of snaps in him. It, and uh, it, yeah, it, those it meltdowns are, yeah. yeah, those meltdowns are not fun to deal with. And, and sometimes, you know, uh, kind of decompressing those and diffusing those and uh, walking away uh sometimes he forgets about that meltdown quickly and we can go on and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening or whatever and and sometimes not right like you said here sometimes that meltdown can yeah. really affect you for hours or or maybe a day or two yeah yeah sometimes sometimes uh you it's it's diffused right away and some days uh you beat yourself up over Wow, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I said that. You, 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 you know, yep. I, I, I tell everybody all the, all the time that the, the kid that's playing me in the video game is terrible. <laughs> he's terrible. <laughs> I want a new guy. <laughs> I see the things he's doing with me, and and it's just terrible. It's horrific. It's not me. So uh, I, 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 I understand it, uh, and uh, it, it. Most people don't, and and that's that's what uh, is difficult about it. Yeah, I, I am so thankful uh, in our lives that uh, the places that we do frequent pub in public, whether in Michigan or down in Florida, a lot of people have come to know Kevin and are really uh, understanding, and you know, give him that that space. And you know, they've seen some of these meltdowns and whatever, but you know, mm -hmm. it's. Uh, I, I think I'm okay with it because number one, people are so kind and understanding. And, and number two, I, I think it's better to have him out trying to live as uh, his best life, right. As normal as possible, instead of staying at home and hiding from everyone. Yeah. So, yep. If we're not out making mistakes, we're not doing enough. Amen. <laughs> I can tell you that. right. <laughs> well said. <laughs> uh uh, I, I it, you, uh, we need to find ways uh, to uh, recharge, uh, find ways to supplement that crappy five watt adapter you got, uh, find ways to recharge during the day. Uh, meditation, uh, people talk about that. Uh, deep breathing, 
uh, you, you, you know, uh, I use my Apple watch. Uh, it's really good to tell me to stop every two hours and deep breathe for one minute, uh, to cut a little graphic on it, breathe in, breathe out, that kind of thing. Uh, it helps mm -hmm. uh, listen to music. Uh, I've got the tunes cranked, uh, a lot of times, uh, you, you, you know, they just kind of remove I, my mind goes to that space, uh, and it's a happy space, and and uh, everything else still seems to function while I'm doing that. And uh, so I listen to music a lot. Uh, and uh, I started doing digital art. I'd never done any art uh, other than photography uh, prior to my head injury. And uh, my buddy took me on a trip to Florida. I I I, I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, and we went to, uh, God, Universal Studios. Okay. And, and we were walking the place and, and the colors in uh, Dr. Seuss land and where uh, the Simpsons were and Harry Potter and all the colors and the scenery uh, I, was, was just fascinating to me. I, I was like in awe. I was like a kid. <laughs> you, you, you know, I, I was just... Uh, fascinated with it since then uh i've been doing digital art and uh i i i gotta tell you that that's been my therapy of choice uh um uh, it seems like the deeper the hole i dug myself into the more i would draw uh i don't do 20 images a night now but there were times that i did uh mm -hmm. wow. and uh the, since my uh, tbi i've created over 1300 images so that that that's that one a day <laughs> for that's, the life that's of it, a at lot. Least. Yeah. Yep. yeah 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 that's uh, great i i can only say uh one thing and uh i i still don't know how to manage my resources as well at all uh i i i've learned the triggers uh i've learned things uh i i'm trying to do one of these presentations once a year and i'm going to do one just on resource management i i've been doing a lot of stuff on that uh the the quicker you learn to manage your resources i can tell you the better you you'll be uh you you, you can't keep running them down uh and the, you'll need them to continue yep. on i i can appreciate that absolutely let's uh go to lesson six uh, uh importance of routine uh i i can't tell you how much that helps uh if if you have a routine and you continually do it over and over again, uh, it becomes a procedural memory. Uh, procedural memory, uh, I, I learned, uh, is rarely affected during traumatic brain injuries. Uh, uh, so uh, setting up routines for everything, uh, I build a process for everything. I build a when uh, I've got something to do at work, I have to stop and build a process and a list and 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 that kind of stuff. But w once I do and go through it a couple of times, it, it's just like uh, it's just like second nature. Uh, so procedural memory is an unconscious type memory. So it just happens. You ride a bicycle, you ride a bicycle once you can get on it, and ride it again. Uh, I, I use the analogy all the time. Um, you, you know, uh, it, you can't remember why you walked into the room, uh, but but you can remember song lyrics from the 1970s, <laughs> you, you, you know. That's Isn't first, that amazing? Yeah, I, you, I hear you. You, you, yep. you got it uh, to you repetitively. So uh, yep. finding ways to uh, having a predictable daily routine can really help survivors regain cognitive skills help enhance their executive functions, strive to turn things into routine because thinking is too time consuming. And so when it becomes unconscious, you don't have to think anymore. And so you're preserving resources by building things into routines. Uh, routines help our brain brains conserve the energies and Minimize risk. Uh, you, you know, having set schedules make it easier for uh, for survivors to remember stuff, uh, events. Uh, changes in memory are common after a brain injury. Uh, it happens according to, but when events happen according to a familiar set schedule, 
people tend to remember them better. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, try try to keep things in the same location. Uh, I I I got to tell you, I've looked for I I've been irate looking for my keys before, and they've been in my hand. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> I think I, we've all done that. Yep. Yeah, I, I I'm just like you you, you know. Uh, try to set that as a routine. Where your keys go, know where your keys go. Uh, those kind of things. Uh, I start each morning. Uh, I block my calendar. My work knows I block my calendar from eight to nine o'clock. I try to organize and plan out my day. Uh, I I keep it very simple. Uh, I try to find three accomplishments that I want to have a day. And uh, I move that to from my uh, task list to my today list. And then uh, I doesn't mean that's the only thing I'm going to do today. But those are going to be the, the focus nuggets. I, I don't try to look at a list of 100 things that I got to do. Uh, I, I only focus on those uh, nuggets. Uh, and I do that planning in the morning. Uh, I, I include my wife sometimes. Uh, she knows better than I do. Uh, I have a hard time saying no. Uh, and so uh, I, I make sure she looks at it and make sure it's realistic for me. Uh, based on where I am in the morning and that kind of stuff. And so uh, planning well, out your day, uh, it yeah. makes things predictable. Uh, and and uh, I think I, I would imagine as a result of the planning and organizing, Steve, it, it hopefully the, the goal is certainly to, to remove that stress level, you know, mm -hmm. at, remove potential triggers and things like that, that may get you a little bit out of sort, so to mm -hmm. speak. Right. Which, which I think is, is great. Keep, keep you, keep you moving forward. Right. Yeah. I, I keep a notepad on my desk where I, I jot down memory issues, you, you know, things I want to remember. And I, I know if I don't write them down, I'm not going to remember them. Uh, and then uh, I, I try to write in with my hand in a pen, uh, and go through the motion of writing down my accomplishments for the day. I could care less what the tasks are on the computer, and I I, I keep those organized. But I, I I I like to lock in a reminder that I accomplished something, and and so that's kind of what what I do. Uh, and uh, I, it it seems to help. Uh, I I think having a plan helps. Yeah, absolutely. Great. All right, this is one for you, Mike. Uh, I, I know you love the technology, uh, as do I. Uh, uh, the use of technology. I think, I think you, and I, you and I are probably going to do a future podcast, Steve, on, on this topic alone. So, yeah, yeah we could, <laughs> we'll try yeah, to keep yeah, this I've one. Got, uh, I've got so no. many gadgets and stuff around here that I've used. Uh, it, it would probably do a good podcast. Uh, uh, the use of technology properly can assist greatly with many issues, though. Uh, hey, let's just but keep keep that uh, in mind. Uh, it helps you keep things organized through calendars, uh, make lists. Uh, I joke, my list have list. Uh, I, I I'm I'm <laughs> big on list and sorting things and uh, making sure uh, I can manage that. Uh, uh, all of that assists with memory issues. Uh, I do my music, my art, my meditation that I do for self-regulation. That's all on a piece of technology. You, you, you know, um, I, I keep most all of mine on an iPad. Uh, a lot of people use their phone. Uh, I have a shaky thumb when uh, my anxiety levels are up, which are... 90% of the time. And so it makes it really hard to use a, use a phone, uh, when your thumb shaking. So uh, Steve, I'm, I'm curious. I don't know if we've talked about this before, yeah. but a lot of your, uh, your coloring, right. And, uh, uh -huh. your art, do you, do you do, uh, any of that on, on, uh, iPads or 100% or... of those images were done on the iPad. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. then I need to talk some more offline because I'm yeah, trying, yeah. To, well, 100 trying to figure something for I Kevin. Do. Yeah. That. Yeah. E even down to my favorite TV shows are downloaded locally on my iPad. So uh, if 
I'm having a bad time, I can throw up some nice episodes of the Big Bang Theory, a good good choice of mine, or or a movie or some music, and uh, I I've got the uh, I've got the advantage over some. Uh, I've got Bluetooth hearing aids, and people can't see them, but uh, I could be sitting here listening to music right now, Mike. And, and <laughs> as a matter of fact, I've I've experimented with that training. People, I've listened to music while I train. Wow, <laughs> kind hey. of. Yeah. If it works, go with it, right? Yeah, yeah. But there's all kinds of, you know, brain games and therapy programs uh, to continue improving through neuroplasticity. You, you know, all of my uh, eye stuff is on the iPad, uh, my eye therapy I do, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, health monitoring. I, I use uh, an Apple Watch for uh, health monitoring. Uh, I, I found that it helps me understand my triggers and stuff. Uh, I can look at my heart rate and tell. Uh, I, I also have a blood pressure machine that I use. I guess that's technology too. I, I, I'm I starting to learn about when my resources are getting. I'm developing my battery meter because it, it doesn't one come with a brain injury. Uh, sure. So I'm starting to learn through these technologies that, hey, there, there there's some when when this gets here and this gets there uh i should go rest a minute <laughs> and 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 uh so uh it, it it really helps uh and uh i'm still learning a lot about that that's why i want to talk about that uh during my resource presentation there's so many things that benefit uh that uh, hey, uh I'll, I'll tell you um when we do a, a podcast in the future and we get deeper into this type of technology topic i've got i've got a number of thoughts i'd love to bounce off you steve but just kind of a little preview um you know and again always using kevin as the as the use case right selfishly uh -huh. speaking um yeah we do give him uh you know he wears uh now, now we have them in a Fitbit watch, right? I've given him my Apple watch now and then, but the Fitbit, because we get more and more concerned about his heart rate, but good news, bad news kind of thing. I think the technology is certainly there today. We all know it's there where you can monitor uh, a lot of those vitals, right? Uh -huh. And But what I'd like to see, and I'm sure it's probably going to come down the pike, but I'd love to you know, press on that further and accelerate this time to market, work with a technology company or two that, it you know, applies AI on top of that, that says, you know, based on these five things that we just measured from your health vital signs, you know, here's what should be done to either intercept and prevent the next thing that's about to occur or do something that's going to at least ease that, you know, mm -hmm. overreaction yep. and tension. I know the technology's there. I mean, they hey, could hey, the, the triggers are there too. Uh, you, yeah. you, it, it, by using some of these neural, I'm, I'm not a big proponent of neural feedback because uh, if you do it bad, you're going to get bad feedback and that's going to send point. you in the dark hole. Uh, yeah. But but I am uh, big on using it to the extent uh, that, you, you know, it can help me understand what that I'm about to be triggered, you, you, you know, or, sure. or uh, I need to take a break. Uh, uh, something that can and that's how I use it. It compiles and says, you need to step away from the keyboard uh, The the kid yeah. controlling you with the controller on the game is not doing well or going to not going to be doing well in this next episode. So. Take a yeah. break. Yeah, uh, it 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 really helps. Uh, I I use all kinds of technology. I use uh, a thing called an Apollo Neuro that I keep on my shirt all the time. Uh, it buzzes and uh, helps raise uh, your heart rate variability uh, over prolonged use of it. Uh, I use it uh, probably eight hours a day. I got something buzzing on my shirt, uh, and uh, it raises the parasympathetic side of your autonomic nervous system kind of bringing uh bringing that fight or flight mode that we all get into uh on the sympathetic side uh trying to restore some balance there it it it, it really helps 
uh, uh, there's all kinds of little devices, little gadgets you can do. Uh, like you said, we, we could do a week on those. Uh, yeah, I probably got a week a, uh, worth of them in my office here. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. I, there's a, uh, a company I, I did a podcast with, the CEO of, of Lotus Labs, mm -hmm. uh, Davil Patel is his name, just a pretty incredible guy. And uh, we did a podcast a few months back. What what I find interesting, Steve, is is uh, when you think about it, anyone with a uh, special need, whether it's a traumatic brain injury, autism, you know, you name it, right? Along uh, different disabilities, you could you could almost invent something or bring something to market, technology wise, that is going to benefit them, but it's also going to benefit the senior the growing senior citizen population mm -hmm. yep. right because yep. they're as we age <clears throat> even without a, a some kind of severe disability we're all going to be challenged with some of these uh, cognitive things and physical things so i i'm delighted to see companies out there that are really focused uh, what i thought was unique about lotus is while they're solutions are designed to help seniors mm -hmm. they start first with with uh it's got to work for someone with disabilities first right mm -hmm. and yep. uh, and that's kind of the you know the lower common denominator to expand for the the broader uh population so pretty cool there are so many things out there yeah. it's hard to keep up with right i mean oh absolutely yeah just like in, in any technology business, no matter what industry you serve, this area, this adaptive technology in that is uh, just growing exponentially. So I'm, I'm excited, though. I, if I think you're really big into the gadgets, man, talk to a functional neurologist. Yeah. Uh, they got more things, uh, cold laser therapies, uh, you, you, you know, they, they've got some really unique therapies uh, that you would think, wow, I, I had no idea. You, you know, uh, I use for exercise uh, a vibration plate, a whole body vibration plate. Uh, okay. and, and, and so if you can't exercise or you don't feel like getting out and stuff, um, it, 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 it will exercise you by standing on it and turning on the program <laughs> and just sitting there listening to music. Uh, it's actually uh, there. A lot of the health clubs and stuff have them now uh, full body vibration plate. So it's quick, uh, you know, 10 minute exercise session. You can sit there and re read the newspaper, drink coffee while, while you're on it. If you can keep the cup from shaking. So, uh, yep. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Now this, uh, we could go on uh, pretty yeah. long and detailed on this, but we'll wrap this one up in a minute here. Yeah. Uh, it, and one thing that I want to uh, emphasize is because this, this has been my kryptonite for a long time. And uh, I finally kicked this one to the curb is if you use technology to assist you with your day-to-day -day activities, uh, I, it's a dependency for me. Uh, uh, you need to develop a device charging routine uh, and, and you need to have that in a location. You need to make sure your stuff gets charged. Uh, and because uh, if you become reliant on them and when you wake up the next morning and you only got one bar and you expect five, uh, you're going to panic. <laughs> sure. happened to me all the time. I ended up uh, buying what I need, set it on my nightstand at night and I plug everything in and, uh, make 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 sure i at least have charged batteries so uh and, and uh, un unfortunately there's so many different kinds of adapters and cables it's not mm -hmm. all it's not all universal I, I, at, at, so yeah you got point, a pile of stuff that yeah 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 at this charged. point in time it's not uh it, it's a lifeline for me uh i don't treat it as you know it's cheap i it's my phone you you know uh it's it's not a depend. I don't buy cables at the at the convenience store. You you know I buy quality right. chargers and stuff and and make sure that I can get. I, I've got so many things that need charging. Make, making sure you got enough outlets and that kind of stuff. Uh, it it, it can become contrary uh, if you uh, yeah. don't you you give up on it. Uh, if if they're never charged, you get mad. You get angry. It becomes a trigger 
instead of the uh, helpful uh, tool that it has. Uh, Today's version of a data center, right? Yeah, you... yeah. <laughs> uh, in, and uh, the next thing is you, you got to invest the time in learning how to use your technology and keep things up to date and current. It, it's not just device. Uh, uh, for many survivors, it can be a lifeline for them. And, and so keeping things current, making sure things are working like they should, uh, is, is something you should invest the time in. Uh, if you suffer with memory issues, uh, investigate using tracking devices for important items. I, I have one on uh, every device that I have can be tracked. Uh, uh, every my wallet can be tracked, my keys can be tracked uh, to the point that uh, I can push something on my phone and make my keys play uh, play music. Uh, so uh, <laughs> it, 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 I used to lose things that much and misplace things. Uh, I can go look on a map and say, oh, you left this at uh, this store or something like that. Sure. And go back, retrieve it in a lot of cases. Uh, uh, Next one is maintain a healthy relationship with technology. Uh, uh, if, if you have anxiety and stuff as I do, uh, you have to limit social media. Uh, I've, I've learned to scroll on. Uh, I'm a giver instead of a taker on social media. You, know, you might see uh, I'll post uh, maybe on some brain injury sites, uh, but most things I only post as pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, and, Art that I, I love those pictures, by the way. Every time I see one of your posts, yeah, uh, beautiful. So limiting social media and and just news in general. Uh, my my wife is my news filter. Uh, I I learn about things after they've uh, happened twice. <laughs> yeah. and, and I smart, like it actually. Way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I scroll on, scroll, learn to scroll without engaging. Uh, it, it's a hard skill to learn these days. Uh, there's so many things coming at you at one to, time, yep. engineered yep. to drag you in and those kind of things. Uh, yep. and, uh, shut your devices down, uh, if at all possible, an hour to two hours before bed. Uh, I know this is a big benefit. I have troubles with it. Uh, uh, I, I use my device to, I, I put this together on my iPad. Uh, I did the research for this on my iPad. Uh, so uh, my my iPad is kind of like my lifeline. Uh, but, uh, and sometimes it's hard for me to shut it down before bed because I'm reading something interesting. I also use it uh, uh, with my uh, neural diversities, my learning disabilities. Uh, uh, I use, uh, have it read books, uh, mm -hmm. have it read emails to me. My iPad will, I can have uh, my work emails read to me by Snoop Dogg on my iPad <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I want to. Yeah. And, 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 you know, once I've learned to use it uh, and embrace it, it really has helped. My, I've been able to fix my uh, horrendous uh, spelling uh, when I can think to use the tool. Uh, I, I've got... Uh, I've got a speech to text. So uh, anywhere my cursor is, I can hit a button and start talking and it'll type. Uh, I, I don't use it to type the whole sentence. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I want to maintain those skills, uh, but I, I do use it to uh, spell a word because uh, it, it that usually would take me uh, getting going out, going to Google and getting mad and being triggered. And, and those kind of things. Now I can just hit a button twice and say the word, it'll type it and move on. And st so I'm avoiding triggers. Uh, so, sure. yep. you know. so that okay. is the role of technology. Uh, number good. eight is uh, emotional regulation. Uh, this needs to take priority uh, and uh, be one of the first things uh, you get your handle or, arms around uh, it took me uh probably three and a half to four years to find a good fit therapist uh so uh, i'm just now getting started on this journey and that's why i'm telling you uh the other stuff you're going to have other therapies other everything you are going to have limited success with this until you can get your uh, uh, emotions in check. 
Uh, you're, it, it, they're going to frustrate you. They're they're going to become a deterrent. Uh, they're going to become a trigger in, instead of something that helps you, uh, gives you energy, uh, learn new skills. Uh, so uh, sure. it, it's, it's one of the hardest things uh, it took me to find and still is one of the hardest challenges to this day for me uh, is uh, staying emotionally regulated. Uh, I identify, record, and reduce triggers when possible. Uh, I I look at everything uh, 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 when it, uh, it, no matter how much it, it is, if it's a small trigger or whatever, I, I try to reduce as many as possible. Uh, th- this next one I learned from my speech therapist and uh, it's eye-opening if you can put it into uh, context. Uh, make a choice on how to respond and allow some space. Uh, emotions can happen fast. We don't think now I will be angry. We are just all of a sudden clenched jaw and, and furious. Uh, so the number yeah. one skill to learn is in regulating difficult emotions. The gift we can give ourselves is to pause. Take a deep breath and slow down the moment between the trigger and your response. Uh, don't think you have to respond right away. Uh, I it, it, This has taken me so long to learn. I get emails and I want to respond or do things right away. Uh, I, I'm taking the barbecue approach. I'm going to let them marinate a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. no, nobody thinks it needs to be responded to immediately but me. <laughs> is what I found out. And uh, it leads to some pretty bad decisions. So put a gap between the trigger and the response. Uh, well, I, I don't want to make light of it, Steve, but uh, that, that statement too could be used for anyone, right? As, especially I, I, absolutely. It, 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 especially it's in not, the business uh, world, right? You know, how many I, times have we been in meetings over the course of our careers? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. if some... Some folks just need to step back a little bit and, and, and uh, uh, slow like down. Why I didn't see this, uh, you know, all my uh, life, I've been rushing to respond to people, you, 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 you know, and the only person rushing me is me. <laughs> yep, good point. Uh, putting a gap between, uh, I started with, uh, you, you know, I started scheduling like, blocks in my schedule to respond to things. Uh, I look at them immediately. Uh, it, it's just my distractibility. I'd look at them immediately, but uh, I would let them marinate uh, and I would respond during my response time. And uh, it, it it does help make you help you make better decisions and keep your emotions in check. And uh, the, the thing is, is that, yeah, yeah, you respond badly to something, but uh, sure. that bad response might only last a minute to the person that you responded badly to. You know, they're over it and they're eating dinner with their family. If it's like me, uh, it stays with me for three or four days. Uh, I, I I feel bad because of what I've done. I don't know how to correct it. Uh, like I said, I I spent a lot of time apologizing. So uh, uh, that 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 is one thing that I've learned that really will help with uh, emotional regulation. Uh, sure. I monitor my physical symptoms now. They 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 provide me with clues. You know, I, I mentioned my heart rate uh, and stuff like that. I I know when my heart rate. Uh, I've got an alarm set. I don't even have to watch it anymore. It tells me, "Hey, your your heart rate said X," uh, and and I go rest. Uh, so uh, learn learn how to monitor things if you can. Uh, engage in positive self talk and look for positive emotions. Uh, I I write down my accomplishments every day. That that's my positive. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I could probably do more positive self-talk and more positive emotions. Uh, but instead of handwriting uh, a bunch of things that I need to do that stress me out, I, I choose to only handwrite the stuff uh, I need to remember and that I've accomplished. And uh, I, I, I think that, uh, kind of fits that bill. I could probably do more positive self-talk. Uh, I'm my own worst critic. Uh, 
Last one is just practice mindfulness. Every slide is going to have something about deep breathing, mindfulness. Uh, every doctor is going to tell you that. Uh, it, it, it helps if you do it. Uh, it helps you live in the moment uh, and uh, draw all of your focus to uh, what you're feeling and your senses and those kind of things. So uh, if you can find a way to do some kind of mindfulness, uh, it would uh, be uh, a, a great investment. Absolutely. Yep. Makes perfect sense, Steve. Number nine, uh, I encourage people to find your passion. Uh, following a brain injury, one one's purpose can be challenged. Uh, mine's still challenged. I I feel like you you know what what was once understood and clear to many of us is now very unclear. Uh, the things we enjoy before we may no longer have interest in or may be limited by our disabilities. We can't do them anymore. Uh, that it, it, It's uh, find a hobby, a project, something that you can dive into. I, I've been gift, gifted with with uh, ADHD and uh, I, I use that to my advantage. I find something, uh, people with attention deficit disorders have the ability to hyper-focus. Uh, on things that are interest. Uh, they they lose all sense of what's going on around them. Uh, use that to my advantage. I found things that uh, I'm interested in. I can hyper-focus on now. Uh, it clears my mind from everything else because uh, I'm on it. Uh, you, you know, like I said, uh, I did the art. Uh, it, it, it can be very therapeutic. Uh, I do lots of things, though, uh, from uh, a finder passion perspective you, you know i like to make things for some reason now used to before now uh i would hire a guy for that you know i had a guy for everything <laughs> you know now i want to get my hands dirty you know i do laser engraving and all kinds of uh stuff i i am just really interested in in making things uh so well uh, good for you how about around the house are you one of those handy guys or, uh, or yeah, I, before I, and I, after I, or, or uh, I, I'm very good at fixing things around the house, but it uh, again, it has to be, I have to be able to engage my superpower of being able to hyper-focus. Uh, sure. And I'm not interested in changing light bulbs or doing things. It's usually something crazy. So I have lots of unfinished projects <laughs> because of, but I have lots of completed ones that uh, outlay yeah. that. But, uh, That's good. Yeah. Right. Uh, and uh, Last but not least, uh, raise your resilience level. Uh, resilience is the process and outcome of successfully adapting to difficult or challenging life experiences. By now, you'll, you'll see that brain injury survivors have an abnormal amount of these challenging life experiences. Uh, we get kicked out a lot. We've got to learn to toughen it up. Uh, a, a little bit, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. We we need to be able to recover faster from when we're triggered, uh, those, those kind of things. Uh, I found giving back uh, has uh, re really helped. Uh, as a survivor, we, we depend on others to get through a lot of the challenges that we deal with daily. It's important that we give back uh, where where we can help or where we can uh, contribute. Uh, it helps restore that balance. You're not, you, you don't feel like you're taking, but you feel like you're also being a provider. And so uh, that's helped tremendously. Uh, I participate in so many support groups, uh, uh, in person, online, uh, uh, Zoom call kind of support groups. Uh, and, uh, I you learn so much for those, and guess what? Those people are your community. Uh, it, it, we've been talking about for several sessions now. Uh, how do we get awareness out there? Uh, how do I get people to understand what I'm dealing with? Everyone at those support groups <laughs> will understand what what you're dealing with. And as a matter of fact, you you'll uh, also see opportunities for you to help others. 
that uh, have it a little worse than you. Uh, and and uh, I, I I found that that kind of helps me from a resilient standpoint. Uh, you feel I, good about it, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, there absolutely. is no, no better feeling than knowing that, you know, something you said or something you did may have yeah. may have positively benefited if it's even one person. Right. Yep. It, yep. It, uh, and it's the reason it, why I'm doing this uh, and, and you engage in positive self imagery and positive self talk. Uh, I try and try to do that. Uh, it, it, it's a tough thing to do, I can tell you, but uh, it, it, it helps if you can take a positive spin to things. Uh, I started at one time, you know, uh, I, I would be, I would come up with a sarcastic spin on something that was positive, but I'd be sarcastic about it. But you, you know what? Uh, it, it, it starts to drive home and starts to drive different, even though I'm trying to be funny about it. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to improve by, by just saying those words and stuff. So it, it can be very helpful. Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, find inspiration. Uh, I, I, uh, have a great playlist of songs that when uh, I'm uh, when I'm down or uh, need that boost, uh, a, a quick boost, uh, I, I can put that on and play it. Uh, find something that inspires you, uh, posters or notes from people or journaling. A lot of people journal and stuff. All of those things help raise your resilience levels. And uh, I think that's lesson number 10. Uh, no, that that's great, Steve. I, I mean, look, uh, I'll I'll say that I'll I'll say this. W one of the things when I first started doing these Kev Advotech writing articles and and uh, doing podcasts over a year ago now, um, I started out with a focus on technology, and uh, I thought that's the direction I was heading heading in, but something interesting happened along the way. I had the opportunity to meet so many amazing, inspirational, and inspiring people that I wanted to I wanted to showcase and highlight those stories, right? The people behind this. So I count you uh, among one of these uh, true gifts and amazing things that uh, I, I've uh, been able to do over the past year and, and reconnect with you. So I think and hope your story will be inspiring to many others. And uh, I'm going to look forward to doing some future things with you. I've got some ideas. You and I will talk some more about that. I know you've got ideas. And uh I, I just I just think we're getting started here, Steve, and and really appreciate all you're doing for this community. Well, uh, I I thank you, Mike. Uh, I I want to leave you with a few. Uh, I did this for a uh, support group, uh, and uh, you're a Detroit man. I I picked one of your Detroit artists, probably not one you listen to, but uh, I, I, I I heard hey. it. I heard the course of this uh, of this uh and 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 it just really uh hit home home uh, so uh, uh it says I'm not afraid to take a stand everybody come take my hand we'll walk this road together through the storm whatever weather cold or warm just letting you know you're not alone holler if you feel like you've been down the same road us sharing with each other uh helps us get through these storms so uh very I nice want to uh leave I you love it and, and by the way there there is some m m stuff that i that i absolutely love so oh yeah yeah so don't, I, I, don't I, count I, this don't count this old guy out yeah you know? he's contagious i, I, I I've, this a, I've got a wide genre of music that I like my, my my energy level doubles when I listen to that song. It it it's yeah. it's incredible. Uh and and I I don't want to leave this all in despair. Uh I uh it's been a bumpy road that uh I've traveled and most people uh, theirs have been rough. Uh uh I I just want to let you know that bumpy roads can lead to beautiful destinations. Uh 
Just buckle up and be kind to your mind. These are actually a couple pictures I took from a vacation a couple months ago. Uh, we went jeeping out into the wilderness, uh, out west on into uh, Native American land, and uh, it, it, it's it's uh, the bumpy roads uh, lead to beautiful destinations. Uh, so uh, I'll beautiful. leave you with that. I love it, Steve. Well, look again. I want to thank you for spending the time. And I hope our audience will, will get a lot of takeaways here. And uh, I encourage the audience, please stay tuned. And you're going to hear more from uh, Steve and I. I. I would love to feature you again, Steve. And we'll get going on some, uh, some new projects in the near future. So best wishes to you. I'm hoping down the line, I, I promise you, I said this before, we'll, we'll make it happen. Uh, we're going to make that veer off I-75 sometime in the future and uh, would love to introduce you in person to Kevin, our son Kevin, and uh, and spend some time with you and your wife. That would be yeah, great. Yeah, I, I, I can't wait for that opportunity. Uh, and thank you once again for uh, allowing me to uh, do this and uh, you sponsoring the podcast. Great. All right, Steve. Thanks again. Love Thank it. You. And to our audience, we'll see you soon. Thank you again.